Hey, how's it going, everybody? Scott Spritzer here, DocSports.com with Rafael Esparza, and we are talking some Super Bowl props. We got the upcoming game between the Buccaneers and the Chiefs. Chiefs laying three to three and a half. That total been sitting around 56, 56 and a half. But we're going to talk about what everybody's talking about this week, which was betting on Super Bowl props, which, you know, Rafael, I was listening to a couple of sports book managers and directors here in town this week. Nick Bogdanovich, who you're familiar with, was one of them, and talking about how uh, they barely used to drop a coin to the bucket when it came to props when all this stuff first started all those years ago. And then now basically it's half the Super Bowl betting and in some books more than half of the Super Bowl betting. I know you've had an experience with that. Before we jump into props, you used to run a sports book here in Las Vegas. And I'm guessing you guys had a template that you would start with and then veer off from that a little bit when it came to designing what you were going to have for upcoming Super Bowl props. Tell us a little bit about the war room what goes on between the sports book director and all of the guys that are working with them and ladies that are working with them to get those props ready to go. Hey, you're, you're correct. The template pretty much sets itself, you know, for the plain ones, overtime, quarterback, prop bets, kicker. They're, they're the same template. You're just plugging in a different name and, and maybe moving it uh, a couple of points there. But I would think the biggest misconception that people don't understand is how long this loads into the computer, not making up the bets, and all that, but you have to load in the computer, uh, double check it, triple check it. If you have a Midwest education like myself, quadruple check it because uh, of misspelling <laughs> and, and bad wording. So I think that probably takes the longest. If you ask any director, any VP and all that, that probably takes the most time is actually loading them in the system alone. I mean, I still do prep bits now. I do mostly entertainment and the crazy ones that make your head drop. A long time to just load them in the system but it's fun the war room's always uh it should be 14 and a half no it should be 17 and a half you're crazy so there's a lot of uh, stuff going on and that a lot of uh drink a uh, coffee drinking because most of the times these are early in the morning we're doing all these uh right. it's not like we're sitting at a bar writing uh, uh notes on napkins and handing each other drinking beers but it's early in the morning doing prep uh drinking too much coffee and red bull and, and trying to get them out as quick as possible. Normally, books put them out that Saturday, be the uh, week before Super Bowl, and then add them, add the rest of them throughout the whole week. Uh, so normally, all of them will have them the majority up already. And then the next couple of days before kickoff, they might add a couple more if someone requests. Sure. That's uh, how they start behind the books, everybody. And I tell you what, a great way for you to start if you're not yet a member at DocSports.com as we head into this. Super Bowl weekend is that $60 free account that you can see on your screen there. Basically what it is, is you can click on that link below the video and set yourself up for a free $60 account, which you can then use on any of mine or any of Raphael's, anybody else on the roster at DocSports.com. You can use it on our daily packages, that $60 free account, and a great way to give DocSports.com a trial run. Again, if you're not yet a member, it all starts by clicking on that link below the video. All right, Rafael, let's get to it. One of the popular props over the past few years or several years have been alternate point spread props. Uh, your thoughts, first of all, on how to approach this category, and is there anything out there that you'd like to share that you like as far as alternate props are concerned for this week's game? I think alternate, alternative point spreads are really handy if you like one team, and if you like that one team, I'm going to give – uh, the greatest team to ever lace up shoes and put a helmet on, the Kansas City Chiefs, because it seems like they can't lose and the game hasn't started yet. If you like the Chiefs and you think it could be a blowout, then lay the minus 7.5 alternate points per prop and lay and get plus $2. I mean, that's a great way. If you think they're going to win by 10 points or old man River Tom Brady can't go compare to uh, the little baby goat and Patrick Mahomes, lay the 7.5. If you think it's going to be a complete blowout, then lay the minus 10.5 and, and get plus 270 on the Kansas City Chiefs. I know our boy Tony George is probably laying at 10 and a half, minus 14 and a half, minus 17 and a half on the Chiefs. He's a big Chiefs fan over at King Kingdom. So I lay those points. If you like uh, Tampa Bay, maybe lay that minus three and a half and get that plus 230. If you think the, uh, Tom Brady, the GOAT, is going to put uh, rings on toes because he's running out of fingers for Super Bowl rings, mm -hmm. then lay the three and a half or seven and a half or plus, plus 375. If you're a total fan like myself, uh, if you think it's just going to be a skyrocketing game with tons of touchdowns and this game is probably going to end at 10 o'clock because they might be hitting the 100 mark, then bet the over under 63 and a half. The over, you can get $2 on the 63 and a half. If you think it's going to be a dead, ugly, 
under game, maybe a Big Ten type game where it's just going to be six to three. Bet the under 49 and a half and get plus 225. I mean, really, really, really good value on alternate point spreads and totals when it comes to Super Bowl. You know, this one's not an alternate point spread, but uh, what I was going to mention, but I just saw in the last 48 hours uh, before we cut this video uh, that somebody had plunked down 100,000 to win 60,000 on the money line on KC. And I don't like the bet. I, he might win or she might win, whoever it was that placed the bet. I don't like the bet because if Kansas City wins this football game, there's a pretty good chance that Patrick Mahomes is going to be the MVP. That's no guarantee. It doesn't mean it's going to happen that way. But if they win the game, you're getting a lot better price on Patrick Mahomes to be the winner of the MVP of the game. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so you're kind of like lessening the, or I should say increasing the value of your bet by betting on Mahomes to win MVP if you think Kansas City is going to win the football game rather than plunking down again 100000 to win 60000 Rafael, your thoughts on that? I, I couldn't agree more. I, I discussed this with other of our handicappers, uh, Doug. I've discussed this with other ones, uh, Alan Harris and all that. And when you approach Super Bowl prop betting, it, it, there's not a million dollars in these sheets that you're going to look at, but there is value. You said it. If you're going to lay the Chiefs minus 170 on the money line, you want to take the three, then look at some other ways. Look at, you said it, Patrick Mahomes, MVP. If he's going to, if the Chiefs are going to win, most likely he's probably going to have two to three touchdown passes, maybe even a rushing touchdown pass. They're probably going to give it to a quarterback. So lay the plus or a minus, was it minus 110, minus 120 out there right. on his MVP. Uh, there's some just really good value. You just have to look at all the sheets, probably get a paper cut one evening when you're trying to circle all your uh, prop bets and all that. But there's very, very good value if you kind of look around and school yourself. I mean, again, there's no million dollars on the sheet, but you can make some nice money on betting some of these prop bets. And one of the pieces of advice that I give every single year that I do radio shows for the Super Bowl for that week, when they always ask about props, I always start off by saying, make sure to bet props if you're doing this for more than entertainment if it's 20 bucks here and there 10 bucks here and there 40 bucks here and there have fun man have a blast bet that opening coin flip go right through the end of the game but if you are looking to do this as more than just entertainment increase your bankroll a little bit you got to look to finding props that can happen that can come to fruition that can cash no matter who is winning the football game and who wins the football game uh, the last thing you want to do is, boy, put all your eggs in one basket and think Team A is going to win and they're going to win by 20 and blah, blah, blah. And you tie all your props to it. Next thing you know, you've got down the tubes and it's, you know, kicking off at the start of the second quarter after your opponent just scored another touchdown and you're getting killed. So I do tell people, you know, find props that can happen no matter who is winning the game, the flow of the game, all that kind of stuff. One of the things I jumped out and looked at, I right away I went into sacks, sack totals, and I saw three and a half couple of days ago. And I do like the over there, Raphael. Steve Spagnuolo is the Chiefs DC. Everybody's probably heard about this by now, but if you haven't uh, and you're watching this show, no one devised a defensive game plan that slammed the door more on Tom Brady in a Super Bowl like Spagnuolo did when he was with the Giants. New York had five sacks in that game, 14 pressures. And thanks to ESPN and one of their NFL shows, I got this stat where they held Brady to 4.3 yards per drop back which was his lowest ever average in a Super Bowl. And now you got to go up against Spagnuolo again. Uh, so listen, it's going to be interesting, but that's one where you're going to combine. You want to see a combination of the two defenses getting sacks. Get after Brady. Spagnuolo shown that he has uh, the goods to do it when it comes to game planning. And then Mahomes is going behind a makeshift offensive line. Listen, I know Casey's got great depth, but they are missing guys up front, including Fisher. Before that, before he got hurt, had to move offensive linemen around to make up for some injuries. And you never know if that turf toe is bothering him a little bit. So, listen, they, they're going to come after him. They're going to test that turf toe. They're going to test that offensive line, and they're going to attack too. So, I, you know, it's one of the first things I did was jump on over three and a half sacks. I did too, because yeah, you see, you nailed it. Uh, and I was looking at more on the other side uh, with the offensive line a shortage that KC is going to have. I thought maybe Tampa Bay, which did a really good job with the, when they played the Saints in the playoffs, they did the oh. same thing. So I thought the same way uh, with Patrick Mahomes. How's his turf toe going to end up uh, if he's running around a lot? That's why rushing attempts for Patrick Mahomes may be a good way to look at a prop bet because he may be running around for his dear, for dear, he dear headlights because he's going to be pressured. So I agree with you. I also bet the uh, sacks prop. So, hey, you just, hey guys, you just got a free play for both of us. Bet the sacks prop over three and a half. <laughs>
And by the way, I'm glad you brought that up that he might be running all over the place because you know what? I, I almost jumped in right away and played under 30 and a half rushing yards for Patrick Mahomes. And under normal circumstances, I'd be all, I think he ran over 30 yards, like three games all season. I mean, it's, he averages like four and a half yard, I mean, excuse me, four and a half carries per game for like 19, 20 yards per game. And it started thinking, making me think that with the offensive line banged up, you might get two or three more carries in this game for positive yardage than you would have normally if Fisher and the guys up front would have been healthy. But anyway, just a thought there. Are you a fan of betting first, the, uh, the, the, the betting the first score, and why would you be a fan, or why would you not? I, I like the plus money in this game at, at uh, any other score than touchdown at plus 180 just because – I think we're going to see a lot of points scoring this game. Uh, uh, so I, I would see we'll probably see some field goals in this game. So why not bet 3 nothing where is the first score? Because uh, both teams are probably going to want to establish the run early to try to get the passing game going, maybe in the second quarter, in the second half. So maybe if one team's uh, running the ball and trying to score and they get shut out and they try to go uh, keep on punching it in through the running back and they get stuffed, then they have to kick that field goal. So I'll take the plus 180. It's not a for sure thing that just because we have baby goat and goat playing in the quarterback that these guys are just going to light it up day after day. Give some kicker some love. I'm going to give a kicker some love. Take the plus 180. Yeah, I I, I like it. I mean, I, I tend to go that way also. And you look at Kansas City, that offense has started off slow in almost every playoff game that Patrick Mahomes yes. has played in. Then they come on like a house of fire after they drop down by double digits, 9 nothing against Buffalo. Um, NBA cross sports is is one that we wanted to cover. There are obviously numerous sports, numerous props, I should say, uh, covering this where you can really dive in. You can find NHL crossover, NBA, obviously. Um, one that jumped out at me that I got to mention is because I got all excited, all geeked out about this. Somebody goes, hey, man, you can get Nikola Jokic at Sacramento on Saturday. Uh, his points and rebounds combined up against the distance of the first made field goal, uh, first made field goal being minus half a yard. But the way they described it to me when I got all geeked and thought I was going to be plunking down big money, they said against the longest field goal. I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, Nikola Jokic is averaging about 39 points of rebounds per game. He had 36 in that first meeting against Sacramento. That's who they're playing on Saturday night. And I'm thinking, I've got a chance to kick a field goal anytime in the game of more than 40 yards. I'm going to be all over that. Well, you know, I had to settle down when I actually saw the prop. The person actually said it to me wrong, but it's still a prop that I'm kind of looking at. Uh, Tampa Bay, for instance, if you look at their games and their field goals, they're they're normally going to go for it if it's fourth and a yard and a half, fourth and two, and they're inside the 35-yard line. They're going to go for it. They're going to run Tom Brady with the sneak or do what they do. We've seen what Andy Reid will do at times when it's fourth and one or fourth and two crazy stuff that tends to work. And if those two teams, those two offenses – are driving inside the 35-yard line, and it's fourth and two or less, I, I think there's a good chance they're going to go for it, which means an eventual first field goal could very well be less than, you know, 30 yards in this game. We've seen Tampa Bay do that for several games now, 24-yard field goal by them or their opponent to kick things off. Uh, so, again, I do kind of like it, just not as crazy about it. What about you? You got some thoughts on the NBA cross sports? Well, I love that one because this fake joke is the, the Joker's an MVP in my book right now. I'm sorry, LeBron. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, uh, 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 Jokic. But the, I'm sorry. The Joker right now is my MVP. So I like that prep. I like the Rudy Gobert points and rebounds versus Terry Kale's longest reception. I, I lean towards Hill on that one because I'm sorry. He's the fastest man in the NFL. And if he gets a screen pass or right receiver pass and, and he's just running around, that's a lot of yards he can pull up there. But there's a lot of great money to be made in these cross sports, not just the NBA, but there's some great soccer ones. There's some fourth round uh, Phoenix Open uh, uh, golf matchups with the Super Bowl. Again, just look at all these sheets. And if you're a big NBA fan, you may have a little bit of an edge that maybe with the odds makers post up. If you know, all right, so James Harden uh, took two days off. He may be well rested against uh, the game the, on Sunday that he played. Maybe he's going to go off. So you can maybe bet him against the Chiefs Buccaneers first half point. So like I said, there's a, there's a pages for everybody that's just not the biggest NBA or NFL fan. So if you like the NBA more, but you're you're at a Super Bowl party, limited Super Bowl party, uh, six people or less, uh, then yeah, you, you may have a nice advantage to just really look at these pages because I love these NBA cross sports. I usually have one every year. I usually do really well. I had Zion Williams uh, last year, tons of uh, prop bets. I, I cashed both of them. 
uh, in my wallet and for Doc's wallet. So uh, hopefully I can do the same thing. But I just love these cross sports because, again, I'm going to be watching the NBA while I'm prepping for the Super Bowl that day. So why not enjoy some NBA action waiting for the big game? Yeah, I, I totally agree. It's my favorite thing to do is look at the cross sports props. And you mentioned golf too, golf matchups. Uh, hockey, I like to dive into a little bit. Uh, I'm looking at some abs crossover spots or props, I should say, for this this particular weekend. But anyway, I, I'll tell people right now, I was up until 6.30 a.m. Pacific time Monday morning. Now, that's not as crazy as it would be for Raphael because I generally don't go to sleep till about 3.30 in the morning. But I was up an extra three hours, and I was all over the cross sports props. It's the first thing I go to. So I have a big packet from Westgate. So if those of you who are looking, where should I find online where are all these props on these crossover sports it's generally towards the end of the 3000 page props booklet the leo tolstoy war uh, tolstoy war and peace uh version of the props that jay and the boys put out at the westgate but anyway uh, rafael before we let you go what have you got planned or in store this weekend over at doc sports on your home page for the super bowl what can people expect to get I'll have my I have a big prop bet like I always do. Nothing too crazy because it's the end of football season. Like I said, it's nothing uh, it's extravagant that I'm going to go out there. But I have a prop bet for you that you're a UFC fan that I actually put this out and a lot of sports books put them out and I think Westgate has it out. What's going to happen? Total knockouts in a UFC event on Saturday or field goals made? So uh, you I like think that. that. How many fights are we down to, though? I think there's like been four scratches already. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's uh, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that one goes. I I I handicapped it, and odds make it as two more would probably be canceled. So it didn't go too crazy so yeah. on it, but that's something to look at. But I mean, over here for myself, I mean, we'll have soccer this weekend, English Premier League, NBA all weekend long. Uh, Friday, I'll have a. Uh, Knuckle Mania uh, fights as Paige Van Zandt uh, steps into uh, BKFC this week on Friday. Uh, I'll have some action on her fight. The UFC also, I'll have action on that one. So, you know, it's it's it, just look at the sheet. We have sports for sports for sports, and I'm not even talking about NHL and college basketball. So right. just click under my lovely face at Doc Sports, and you'll see all my, all my plays I have this weekend. And I'm basically doing the same. By the way, I want to let everybody know if you're watching this before Thursday afternoon, all of our Super Bowl plays, whether we have sides, totals, props, what have you, uh, will be available at DocSports.com on Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Anytime after 6 p.m. Eastern, you can grab them before that, sign up. Or, you know, but the bottom line is you're going to get the plays around 6 p.m. Eastern a little bit after that on Thursday. So, And they will be there all weekend after that time on Thursday right up until kickoff so you can check them out. But you know, I always recommend you get down early as possible. Uh, with some plays because you're going to lose value as you get closer to the weekend. But uh, he's Rafael Esparza. I'm Scott Spritzer. And if you want that free $60 account, don't forget, you start by clicking on the link below the video. You can use the free 60 bucks on any of his, Rafael's, uh, daily packages, any of mine, or anybody else on the roster at DocSports.com. For Rafael, I'm Scott. We are DocSports.com.